And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. How many can testify that he woke you up this morning? And he started, I don't see everybody's hand in here. But whether you realize it or not, the Lord woke you up this morning and started you on your way. And wonderful is his name. Come on, let's give him praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
for the rest of my life. How many of you going to serve him for the rest of your life? Come on, say for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. Oh, yeah. Come on, put those hands together for the rest of my life. How long you gonna serve? I don't know you for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. Me up this morning. Start me on this way. Put food on the table. About joining my day. And wonderful. And wonderful. And wonderful. And wonderful. And wonderful. Yeah, we're blessed to be able to be in the house of the Lord one more time. He's been real good to us, and we're just thankful unto him for doing it in our lives. Again, he saved us from our sins, delivered us out of the hand of the enemy. And we are here as witnesses unto the world of the saving, healing, and delivering power of Jesus Christ. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He made a way, especially for us Gentiles. Gave us an opportunity to be adopted into the royal family by salvation. And so, again, we just thank him for this opportunity. And we're encouraging everyone who is watching this television broadcast, listening by radio, to seriously consider the gift that God has given mankind. If you accept that gift, you can have everlasting life. But if you reject the gift, you have everlasting damnation. I don't believe anybody in their right mind wants to go to hell. And in fact, God doesn't put you there. If you go there, you put yourself there. You sent yourself there by rejecting his gift. And so again, we just thank God again for this opportunity. And we do invite you, if you ever are in the Central Georgia area, to come to our services and be active. Don't come just to look at us, but come to put yourself into the service. Because if you put something into it, you will get something out of it. And we believe in shouting, dancing, giving God glory for the things that he has done in our lives. And the most incredible thing that he has done for us is saved us. That's something that everyone can have. Regardless of your financial situation, you can be saved. And so we just want to share the experience with the world because he has made the difference in our lives. Our address here is 7545 Knoxville Road, Lizella, Georgia. We are right outside of Macon, Georgia. And if you find Highway 80, head west past Middle Georgia University, go approximately two miles, you, you will see a crossing, Knoxville Road crossing Highway 80. And if you make a left onto Knoxville Road, go approximately a mile to the stop sign, you will see the church right past the stop sign. 
And so, again, we encourage you to come and be a part of these services. And our mailing address is 7697 Knoxville Road, La Zola, Georgia, zip code 31052. If you desire any media from us, CDs or DVDs, all you have to do is contact us and let us know. If you desire this one, note the number, and when you contact us, give the operator this number, and we will send you this one. And in your package will be a listing of all the CDs and DVDs that are available. And if you desire others, we ask that you send your donation. And upon receiving your donation, we will send you others. And we go back and forth in that manner. We do not put a charge on any of our media. But we do ask that people donate because there is a cost. And so, again, we just thank God for putting us in this position where we can be a witness through media. And we thank God for those of you, some of you are donating to the ministry. Some of you are even tithing to this ministry. And we want to tell you thank you. And uh, so, again, we just thank God for you. And we pray that he, he continues to bless you and your family. I also encourage you to visit the church website. The web address is www.lizellachurch.com. Again, it's www.lizellachurch.com. Once there, visit the tracks page. This is the most important page on the website. You will see several tracts written by the founder of this ministry, Apostle Albert Phelps. If you go there and read those tracts, you will have a very good idea of what he taught and what we are continuing to teach. And if you desire to visit any of our other locations, the best way to get those directions is at the website. Click on the Maps and Addresses button. Click on the location you desire to attend. Enter in a starting address, and your device will generate a map that will lead you turn by turn from wherever you are to any of our locations. I also want to let you know we do have a presence on Facebook. All you have to do is do a search for the Lizella Pentecostal Church, and you will see our page there. Uh, if we have events coming up, it will be posted on our Facebook page. And so we encourage you to go there and check it out and link up with us there. Uh, if you friend us there, then you will get everything that we sent out. And so, again, we just thank God for this opportunity, this avenue that has been presented before us. And, again, we just thank God for you. We encourage you to call us. You can call us right now while this telecast is on. Our telephone number is area code 478-935-8589. If you need prayer, most definitely if you want to be saved, call us and we have ministers that will lead you to Christ. This is the most important event or in, the occurrence that can occur in our broadcast is when an individual gets saved. This is the purpose of our ministry. We're not here to raise money, but we're here to lead people to Jesus. And whenever one accepts Jesus into their life, we celebrate. And we thank God because that's a miracle. That is the greatest miracle that can occur in one's life. I know many people look at having a lot of money, having big houses and cars and natural resources, and they even call it blessings. But it's, it's people that have, have those things. And their life is not a blessing. But if you have Jesus in your life, you are blessed. And so again, we just thank God for what he has done. And we're looking forward to what he is going to do. And right now, we're going to see if everybody ready to continue forth with your praise and worship. The devotional leader is coming. Give the Lord praise as they come in Jesus' name. Sister Pastor Eddie Walter. God is good all the time. 
He put this song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good. Yes, he is. All the time. Through the darkest night. For oh, his light will shine. God. God is good all the time. Oh, yeah. God is good all the time. He put his song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, oh, his light will shine. God is good. God is good. lifted us. And if you will, go ahead and get your Bibles. Lift them up and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I believe what it says to believe. I come to the Lazella Pentecostal Church to be taught the Word of God. I will not serve the devil. I will not live in sin. Jesus Christ died for my sins. And the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. I am Christ's life. I am born again. I have power over the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
and amen once again. Let's give the Lord another big celebration. Ah, oh, yes. If you will, just bow your heads right where you are. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for yet another chance, another opportunity to come before you and also to come before your people. Lord, as we go into your word tonight, we pray that it is a word of comfort for those who are going through. We pray that it is a word of salvation for those who are lost. We pray that it is a word of encouragement. Lord, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's give him praise again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yes, you may be seated. Again, we thank God for another chance. He's given us yet another opportunity. Some people didn't make it this week. But yet the Lord had mercy upon every one of us and allowed us another chance to come together in praise and worship unto him. We thank him for his son, Jesus, coming into this world with the purpose of dying for our sins. We also thank him for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost that has been made available for everyone who is willing to obey the laws and the principles of God. We thank God for the natural people. God has used in most situations, God used somebody to deliver a word to us while we were in our sin. And the most influential person in this ministry was Apostle Albert Phelps. Most of us who've been in the ministry any amount of time, it was his preaching and teaching that let us knew that we need Jesus. And so we thank God for Apostle Phelps. He set this ministry up and established it, and it is still going. We also thank God for Senior Pastor. Ethel right. Phelps, she is the current pastor of this ministry. And we thank the President, we thank God for her being in this service tonight. Thank God for her hanging on in there. Being encouraged. It's not easy. Doing a work unto the Lord is not easy. Because you have opposition. From man and spiritual. And so, but we thank God for seeing your pastor hanging on in there. We also thank God for the pastor of the Society Pentecostal Church. Pastor Willie Wooten. Along with his spouse, Sister Betty Wooten, thank God for them being in here this evening. And if you ever are in the Forsyth area, feel free to go to the Forsyth Pentecost Church. We also thank God for the, the pastor of the Fort Valley Pentecost Church, Pastor Lizzie Dennert, along with Assistant Pastor Melvin Dennert. Thank God for them being here. And if you are in the Fort Valley area, we encourage you to visit the Fort Valley Pentecostal Church. If you're in the Macon, Lizella area, feel free to come on over here to the Lizella Pentecostal Church. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to 1 Samuel chapter 15. We have a situation. I was getting prepared for this message this evening. And we're going to see on down in the word where we find out that obedience is better than sacrifice. We know that God had set up sacrifices 
as a way of reconciling man back to God because of Adam's sin and mankind continuing to sin God had set up animal sacrifices to be in the place to make things right between man and God. But God's will is that we obey. Because if we obey God, you won't need a sacrifice. Okay? That's what I've had planned on talking about tonight. But as I begin to go and go through the scriptures in this chapter, we're going to read verse 1. It reads, Samuel also said unto Saul, the, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people. Over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Verse 2. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. How he had waited. For him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman. Infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Now this was the words of the Lord. God began to instruct Saul to go and smite Amalek. See, the Lord remembered what Amalek had did to Israel. All of us in here, every one of us who are saved, we have enemies. Spiritual and natural. And when the enemy does something to us, the Lord remembers it. Now, his time is not our time. That's the title of the message tonight. God's time is not our time. So by the Lord saying, I remember this, this is something that happened in the past. See, the children of Israel had went on into the promised land. But there was something that happened while they were traveling. Something that the Amalekites, and we're going to go look at it, what they did to the children of Israel and what they did upset God. And God didn't strike right then. But God waited 400 years later and told Saul to go now and get Emily for what they did. 400 years. This is between the time. Now let's go back and see what Emily did. Let's go to, go to Deuteronomy 25. Deuteronomy 25. And 
and we're going to look at verse 17. It reads, remember what Emily did unto thee, by the way, when ye were come forth out of Egypt, how he met thee by the way, and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee when thou was faint and weary and he feared not God. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. Now look at what the Lord said. What the Amalekites did were lie in wait. Now the Israelites were passing through. And usually whenever you're traveling, especially a large group uh, of people, everybody can't move at the same pace. Some people were a little slower. Some people may have been a little older. And what the Amalekites did, they didn't attack the young, strong men, but they attacked the rear, those who were lagging behind, those not able to defend themselves. And so God said, you know what? I'm going to remember what y'all did, Amalekites. And I'm going to let the children of Israel go and get into the land and get settled. Then, I'm going to raise them up and go and destroy the Amalekites. Don't forget, God's time is not our time. God waited 400 years. To raise up Samuel. And Saul was supposed to. Go in and carry out this mission. Now what really. Caught my attention when I was reading this. We had a testimony this morning. We had a young lady to testify. And. The young lady had been volunteering right. since the beginning of this year. Yes. Now, remember, y'all remember what senior pastor told us the beginning of the year? Yes. About this year. Yes. But this individual had been volunteering on this job right. because they were looking for an opportunity yes. with this company on down the line. So, guess about two, three months ago, the opportunity arose. And they were called in for an interview. The, 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 the individual had showed the company that, hey, I'm a good worker. You know if I can, I'm a good worker and I'm working for free. You know if I'm dependable and you're not paying me. They had manifested trust to this company. So the individual thought they were finna get the job.
One month passed. Don't forget God's time and not our time. Two months passed. And they called the individual back, individual back for a second interview. And the individual just knew that I got this now. Because her and the, and, 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 the, and the person that was interviewing her, they already had a relationship. They were already on first name basis. So the individual thought they were going, you know, had the job and everything. Then the individual got a call. Now don't forget God's time and not our time. Individual received a call about two weeks ago. Hey, you had a job. But hey, that's not the kicker. That's not the kicker. The kicker is since time has passed, pay grade for that job went up about 8% for the year. See, if the individual would have started on the job two months ago, they wouldn't be receiving the same pay. See, God's time, not, not our time. Not man's time. See, the individual wonder why they ain't calling me, why they ain't why. Oh, I got to get this paperwork get to Atlanta. They got to check everything out. They got to check me out. See, God time and not, not our time. See, if she would have started two months ago, she would have missed out on a big raise. And they hadn't even got the job yet. She got a raise without working a day for pay. God's time is not our time. But in, 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 in that, as I begin to read this, what we're talking about tonight, again, God, he waited. 400 years. I'm quite sure a lot of people have forgot. All those generations passed. But God never forgets. If you have an enemy that has done something, I'm talking about an enemy now, that has done something to you and you're a child of God, he might not even get that enemy in your lifetime. He may not even get the enemy in their lifetime. But the Lord will wait and do it in his time. And his time is always the right time. So here it is again. Again, this is a lesson for us. That God's time. See, we wanted to do it yesterday. Lord, destroy my enemy. We got those Old Testament prayers. Yeah, get him now, Lord. <laughs> but God has a bigger and better plan. And God also will, will give the individual, if it's an individual that did it to you, he'll give the individual a chance to get, get straightened out. So he's merciful. They're like, oh, we want to get them now. We want vengeance now. But 
God's time is always the best time. So, but getting on back now, let's go on, go on back to 1 Samuel 15. So, God delivers this message to Saul through Samuel for him to go in to smite Amalek. Told him, told him to destroy everything. Kill the men, the women, the children, the animals, everything. Now, your spare time, you can read these in between verses, but we're going to pick it back up at verse 9. It reads, but Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them but everything that was vile and refuge that they destroyed utterly. So let's look and see what Saul does here. He spared the king and he spared the best of the animals. Now, God's word was to kill everything. He did get rid of the stuff that wasn't no good. All the stuff that was vile, all the stuff that was trash, he went ahead and destroyed that. Then verse 10 says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he is turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. So now, 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 Saul was just anointed in verse 1. He had, he had been given one mission. And Saul messed up the first mission. And now the Lord is saying, you know what, I'm sorry I did this. I'm sorry I, I, I selected Saul. But really the people selected Saul. Because Saul was a big handsome man. He was tall. He stood up above everybody else. So they thought he would make a good king. Again, it says he turned his back from following me, had not performed my commandments, and it grieved Samuel. Verse 12 says, And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and is gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gigogal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. <laughs> the man of God finally catches up with Saul. And Saul, he come up to Samuel all smile. Samuel, I'm glad to see you. I have kept the commandment of the Lord. Let's read on down. Verse 14, and Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? Look at what, what Samuel said. Wait a minute now. You... The commandment of the Lord would kill everything. They sound like I hear some sheep. And I hear some cows. Now, if, if, if you killed everything, I, I shouldn't be hearing any noises from these animals. Let's look and see what Samuel said. Saul said. Verse 15 said, and Saul said, they <laughs> this is how folks do you now. 
He said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Now look what he's doing. He's passing the book now. Saul was supposed to be in charge. Saul was the one who received commandment. Samuel didn't tell the people the commandment. Samuel told Saul the commandment. So God was holding Saul responsible for carrying this mission out. But here Saul is, he's saying that he's giving control to the people. The words say Saul and the people. If we go back up here. In verse 9. It say, but Saul and the people. Spared. Not, not the people spared. But Saul and the people spared. So he was in on it too. But when folk get caught. They try to pad the book. So he put it on the people. Verse 16 said, Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, was Thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed the king over Israel. So Samuel began to tell Saul, when you, you were not, the Lord made you king. Put you in head, put, made you the head. Verse 18 says, and the Lord sent thee on a journey. And said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, yea, I have obeyed. The voice of the Lord. And have gone the way which the Lord sent me. And have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Now look what Saul said here now. He said he obeyed. Now, now, now the Lord had told him to kill, even kill all the people. That would include the king. But he said he obeyed, but then he come right back behind him and say he spared. Agag. Then verse 21 he said, but the people took other spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. In Gilgal. Now see, see, you know what lies do. They, you, got to, you got to keep on lying. You got to try to tell another one to cover the first one. This is exactly what Saul is doing. He putting it on the people. When he was in charge. Then he said that we kept the best of these to be a sacrifice. God didn't tell them to keep animals to be a sacrifice. He said go on and kill all of them. Then verse 22 says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? as in obeying the voice of the Lord 
Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. So, so Samuel began to tell Saul that the Lord doesn't really have delight. He doesn't enjo really enjoy burnt offerings and sacrificing. That's not the best thing. That's not what he really desires. But he desires for us to obey. Because back in this time, if he obeyed, he wouldn't need the sacrifice. What you need sacrifice for if you hadn't seen? So the Lord prefers obedience. That's best. Then he said in verse 23, for rebellion is as the sin of rich crowd. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So what you doing, Saul, you, you just as bad as these folk doing witchcraft. And all these folks in iniquities and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Saul lost his position then. He still had the title. But with God, it was already gone. What he had, what, two days? Yeah, it was two because it was overnight. You know, Samuel had a Waited overnight. He was anointed one day. Did wrong. Next day when Samuel caught up with him, he lost the position. See, if, if, if we disobey God, you can have a title. A lot of folk walk around here tight with titles. But they don't have the position. Men, they call them men of God, women of God, with titles. But if we rebel against God, you're going to be working for free with your title. Because in God's eye, that's all you will have is a title. See, see, Saul lost the kingship, and God had already another one prepared to take his place. Yeah, he already got somebody. If we disobey God, he already got somebody. If I mess up, disobey God, he already got somebody. See, everybody didn't know what was going on. We're going to read just a little bit more, and then we're going to knock off for the night. Verse 24 says, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, now, now see what Saul should have did was at the beginning. Acknowledge the error at the beginning. Don't try to cover it up. But acknowledge the wrong doing at the beginning. Oh, he acknowledging now. Oh, yeah, I seen. I, I have seen. I transgressed the commandments of the Lord. Yes, you sure did. And our words. Verse 25 says, Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. So now he wants to try to restore the relationship with the Lord. 
He wants Sam Samuel to go in as a mediator to get him back right with the Lord. Okay? We praise God for you watching the Pentecostal Bow Hour telecast. We invite you to watch all of our telecasts. We invite you to be with us in our services. We're in three locations, Forsyth, La Bella, and Fort Bella, Georgia. We begin every Sunday morning with Sunday school at 9 a.m. Morning worship begins at 11 a.m. And our evening services are here at the La Bella Pentecostal Church beginning at 7 p.m. We're in Bible study every Monday night here at the La Bella Pentecostal Church beginning at 7 p.m. We're also in Bible study in Fort Valley at the Fort Valley Pentecostal Church beginning at 7.30 p.m. So tune in.